What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Oakfield Farm and welcome back to Simulation for the Nation. We are finally here. Nearly. Just about. Um, we, are, we have some oilseed rape, some spring oilseed rape we're going to go and tuck into today. Um, however, it did rain earlier on for about an hour. Just this, even though it doesn't really look like it now, there's barely a cloud around. But it did rain, which kind of just knocked us back a little bit. So we're hoping that it's going to dry out a shade more over the next hour or two before we go and tackle things over there. Um, but with that in mind, we will... Uh, well, what we can do is have a look at a few things first, and then we're going to take a tractor... And we're going to take a trailer over to the field, and then come back and put the other trailer on, I think. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. So, the other thing which is very frustrating, and uh, preventing us from doing certain things, is our diet feeder. Uh, now, for those of you who may have uh, recently watched... Um, the the last episode, or my last update from the farm really, um, you'll notice at the end there something went wrong with the diet feeder, and boy did it go wrong. Um, I thought that we might have got away with it, to a certain degree, I thought that it may not cause as much trouble, uh, to a certain degree, and uh, in both instances I was, uh, well, frankly, wrong. Um... <laughs> Essentially what happened, if you didn't see it, we were loading the, we were loading the diet feeder with silage bales and uh, when I was tipping the silage bales in, somehow, I'm not quite sure how it happened, but the the bale grab fell into the mixer whilst the mixer was turning. So for those who don't know how this operates, inside of here we have there's a huge big kind of auger that goes from this end all the way down to the this end. And uh, it's this is the shaft that drives it. And yes, yeah, so this kind of sits in the middle, if you imagine that's the bearing for it there. And that turns around and minces everything up inside. Um, however, when it drops the bale in, the bale grab in there, it causes um, friction and resistance and it just bends things and causes things to really go wrong. Um, and because I wasn't in the, uh, the Ford when it happened, I couldn't immediately kill the power, it kept going. There were no shear bolts on there to break off or snap off, so it just kept going until something broke. Um, so unfortunately, as we have a look around here, you can already see that the metalwork is bushed a, a hole through the side. So that's coming, that's sticking out. Um, we come around here, you can see again, it's sticking through the side here. There's some teeth from the auger, and there's some up the top there. And what that means is that if we come around the side here, we're just going to scoot on up the ladder. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. So as you, what you can see here is a right shambles, frankly. Um, this here auger, this big one, is supposed to be straight up and down like that. And then this little one down here, the small one, which is going that way, is supposed to run along the bottom end here. And that kind of helps to pull all the material out the corner down towards the um, the auger shaft, which is on the side there. The, so the, the, the discharge uh, chute, for want of a better phrase. Um, so as we look at it, you can already see there's a lot of damage there. What's happened is, from a little bit of a closer inspection, or as close as we could get, um, the this end, the bearings are completely destroyed. It's ripped everything out of its socket there uh, for both augers. Um, both augers are bent. This little, the smaller of the two is totally twisted, so that would need to be replaced. Uh, this one has a very slight warp to it. It's difficult to see there, but it is warped. And if you see this little section here, which has all those grizzly teeth on it, that is actually um, one of those, not this one, one on the slightly further up, on pointing down that we can't see, is completely twisted as well. And if we went up to the front there as well, we'd see there's a little bit of damage on the, um, kind of on the sh side shoots, really. Uh, so, ultimately, it's not good news at all. Um, we... I've spoken with our insurance, they're going to come out and have a look at it and do like a, it's like a loss adjuster is going to come out and evaluate it, see what he recommends, because we're going to have to see if we can put this to the insurance to get it fixed. If we can't get it fixed, then, heaven forbid, we might have to replace it somehow. Um, but yeah, that is not ideal in the slightest, so. But I thought I'd give you an update to let you know where we stand with it anyway. Um, and where we stand with it is in the shed, in the workshop, and no further. Um, however... The good news is that we can hopefully get on with some uh, harvest today. So if I pop up my little um, PDA here, there we go. 
We are going to go and head over to, um, we're going to go to field 19 today. We're going to start with some spring uh, oilseed rape, as I mentioned. And then you can see everything is suddenly shot into bloom. So typically we've now got a lot to do. So whilst the weather is good, we will go and uh, go and crack on. I want to get the rape done first. That was desiccated a while ago. And uh, since then it has been, it's been killed off. And then the but that we're at the stage now where we're just waiting for it to dry off sufficiently and for the the seeds to harden before we could go in there and lift it. Uh, the the pods are just on open again now, which means that if it gets rained on again to any severity, we could start to lose seed on the floor, which we don't want to do uh, at all. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to um, quickly run the tractor and trailer over. Once we've done that, then we can um, we'll come back and we'll get the the combine itself moved over. So we'll come back to you when we're. I guess when we're up and running. Right, you are everybody. Welcome back. We are all go. Convoy is up and working here, and we are heading down to see if we can finally get some spring oil seed rape cut here this afternoon. Uh, it might still be a little bit damp. We're going to test it one more time when we get down there, but uh, everything else we need to do has been done. So we've got uh, David is going to haul some grain for us today. He's driving Barry's case. Barry is up ahead in the pickup truck. He's head of the convoy, um, which obviously leaves me sitting here in the combine. Now, this next kind of couple hundred meters is going to be the hardest part uh, because we've got a heck of a chicane to kind of get this header through. Um, and what I really don't want to do is take out uh, Mrs. Jenkinson's wall, really, to our garden. So we need to think about that. But we'll we'll just take our time. Barry is uh, experiencing coming out in and out of this gateway anyway, so we'll leave it with him. Hopefully he can get this just squeezed through, and we'll, we should be good to go. But more than anything else, it's just a... Ooh, that was a bit tight there. It's just nice to actually be able to get going now, to be fair. Uh, it's been long overdue, that's definitely for sure. Uh, so this is the, the bit that's going to possibly be a little bit of a, a nuisance. Oh, by, by Jove, he's done it. Look at that. And then he gets stuck on the hill. Ooh, has he bottomed out there? Maybe he just needs us to go and put the... Uh, we'll just jump out. We'll go and put, make sure he's got his diff slots uh, engaged properly here. That could be an issue. Oh. Touch of brute force to get us up the hill. There we go. Lovely job. Now where he goes. Meanwhile, I'm just blocking up the entire road here. Never mind. Get that shut as well. So now all I've got to do is try and squeeze my way in here, which is a little tight as well. Perfect. Onwards. So I think Barry's just going to pull himself into the field there and just kind of block off the uh, block off the gateway, so I can just drive straight onto the um, all being well, straight onto the header. That was relatively pain-free, actually. All being said. It's nice to get the big green machine out into the field. Uh, we have, we're coming up into field 19 here. Uh, quite one of the largest fields we've actually got drilled this year. Um, we're going to be looking at the best part about 35 acres here of uh, spring oil seed rape. So it sh it's not, it shouldn't take us too long if we can get a good solid run of it. Um, and by that, if we can get like the rest of today and ideally all tomorrow morning. Well, depending upon how early the dampness sets in, which I'm. I can assume it's going to be quite early tonight due to the uh, the inclement weather we've had. But uh, if we can get some nice, consistently mild weather, nice breeze perhaps blowing through, we should get this all done um, by this evening. It's going to notch this back a little bit. That's the spirit. Lovely stuff. Just see if we can get ourselves squared up a little bit more. Ooh, 
we've got it. Okay, so Barry needs to move himself. If he's not there, I'll do it for him. Lovely. So, as we wait to see if we can get going, um, before we bring out the combine any further, let's have a wander in now. We'll bring our moisture meter with us. Uh, so we are 22% still. That's a little bit high for what I would like, I'll be honest. Uh, I was hoping we'd be able to get that down below 20 at the very least. Um, and it's still... Yeah, okay. I think what we're going to do, we're going to leave it for a little bit longer. It's just not quite dry enough yet, uh, unfortunately. But we can, we'll bring the combine in a little bit closer at least. And then... Uh, we, uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'll just take the combine down to the side here, actually. Hit that fence post. Because what I think we'll do is we'll go and... David's not gonna, or uh, David's gonna be carting grain, so he's gonna stay here with us. But Barry's gonna be going away into New Holland, so we'll so we'll set him away. Actually, that's something we can do. And uh, let's just see, we don't need that. Oh, I want it. Oh, we'll shut this for now. Shut my door. And we'll come back to that in a little while. But yeah, so we'll I'm just gonna unhook the header trailer about here. Maybe actually other way actually, because Barry David can come and park his tractor in here for now. Let's get that nicely out of the way. Excellent. So what we're going to do, we're just going to have a, a, a chat with David here, make sure he knows what, he, what we're getting up to, and then we'll uh, we'll go back to the yard and get Barry away as well. So we'll catch you back here in a little while. Right, yo, folks, we're back quickly just before we can jump onto the combine. We just have to get Barry set away. Um, as you can see, we're back over at the sugar beet land that we ploughed over a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's dried out quite nicely actually so far, and I'm hoping it'll continue to do so. Um, we're at the point now though where we need to start kind of breaking this down a little bit because we are going to have to um, drill it in the coming weeks. Uh, get the drill back out and get Barry set away. Um, but it's so heavy still, it really needs to be worked down. So we're actually bringing, we're bringing down the um, cultivator that we restored. And we're gonna, Barry's got that in the back of the fold and he's going to give it a good working over there and see how it comes along. So at the moment, yeah, we're just going to give it a bit of a, a, a work over. What we'll actually find is, I'm just going to pull alongside Barry here. Get out of his way as well, a touch. Oh, I might just pull out here. Should get out of his way there. So we've got a 6 meter working width, uh, which is nothing untoward about that. However, we're actually only working 3 meter widths, and the reason we're going to be doing that is so that the ground effectively gets worked over twice. Um, so as you can see when he gets himself settled down here, uh, we'll be able to uh, we give the, the the land that we've just passed over gets a second work in really. Uh, it is just that thick at the moment that we just need to smash some of these clods up here. It's really compacted, particularly down in that bottom corner actually. That's the that's the worst area. Judging from, from what I can guess and what I can gather, I think that's the area where they were uh, where they stockpiled the sugar beet and then they had the tractors and trailers coming in and they were loading out from there and that you can really tell that area's taken a bit of a pounding um, but we'll leave him to carry on he's got plenty to go out and we need to go and see how the combine um, or the chances of being able to combine so we'll just back around here I need to be careful there are tractors and trailers coming in and out of here as they continue to load so we'll just get on our way Barry knows what he's doing there, he's got plenty to work out as well, so we'll just let him go. Here comes one of the, the boys in the trailers now actually. So these are coming from about three fields back. Um, and this is the only entrance for them really, so they've got, they haven't got they have got far to go actually. I tried to have a quick look and find them before, but they were too far away, so I think they're uh, nearly at the end of the field. Uh, we are just going to go back up to the yard, well hopefully we'll be able to get ourselves up and running again. Still nice and breezy today, which is a good thing. So it looks like that we'll be in a good position to um, 
to get going now because you should have taken out the last bit of the moisture. Oh, there's another guy out in the bow. Oh, that was a nice looking fast track, I think. Everybody's out and about today. It's perfect weather to get onto the land now, actually. We've been longing for a few good solid days in which to dry everything out, and I think we're just about getting those now, so that's good news. Uh, now, what we're going to do, we're just going to head on back up to the yard there. All been well, I'm just going to pick up a few things, and we'll take the uh, truck out and see how we can get going. So I will... Um, I'll catch you on the way out to the field there, well hopefully we'll get a start. Well welcome back to a rip roaring harvest. Um, I'm stuck waiting to be honest. I have a full tank, I'll show you here, a bit full to the bursting and my and David is not quite back yet. So uh, we're waiting, he's not too far away, he's just come back through the village. Uh, so he should be here any moment now but it's one of those things. When there's only three of you, you can't do everything or be everywhere, so we're getting through it. Uh, Moisture-wise, we couldn't quite get it down to what we wanted it to be. It's 19% at the moment, so it's going back into our grain store where we'll have to run it through the dryer several times. But at this kind of time, there's not a lot more we can do, really. We've just got to take what we can get. Um, so we're, we're trying our best, and we're going to see how much more we can get pushed through here um, before it gets too too uh, damp this evening. My theory is that it's probably not going to be a great deal, but we'll take what we can get. Um, so we will, we will see what's going on. And I think I'm going to have to give David a quick hand. I think he's a bit, he, he needs the helping hand there. So we'll come back when he's here, and we'll get ourselves up and working again. Lo and behold, folks, the cavalry has arrived. Uh, we're going to get this emptied out, and hopefully we'll get all the way round again. Uh, that make things a little bit easier, but. Heavens, it's uh, there's a good crop here. It's yielding very well. Uh, like I said, there's about a 35. Well, well, this is actually no close to the 45 acre field, and um, yeah, I can't complain with how it's coming through so far. Uh, we're not even. We're probably about three quarters of the way around it at the moment, and then I just couldn't get any more in there. So it's coming in well, but yeah, it's still like I say, it's a bit too damp, which is not the best thing. But you know, we'll make do with what we can here. We're going to get this. Uh, We'll, we'll probably be able to keep running until about 8 o'clock, I should imagine. So if that's as long as we get to go. Let's get my door shut. It's going to get dusty again. If 8 o'clock's as good as the uh, weather gods are going to give us, then that is what I'll take. Uh, right now I'm just lo longing to get as much done as possible, so um, you can't be too fussy at the moment. John Deere is set up well and has been dialed in fantastically well actually, uh, no problems with it so far. Uh, when you put the oilseed rape kit on the front of this, it does mean that the feed gets evened out a little bit better, so it's coming in nice consistently into the uh, the feeder house there. So it's, the, as of yet at least, we haven't experienced any, uh, any issues with blockages or anything like that. Uh, and hopefully that continues. This is our only field of uh, OSR we've got a lift today or this season, this spring, uh, from the spring crops at least. So we will be looking to get this finished off as soon as possible and then we'll take off the uh, OSR kit, the knives on the front and then we're straight into the barley and the wheat. Uh, at that stage, like I mentioned previously, I think we are going to be trialing a uh, Macdon header, which Charlie has ready and then he all apparently all he needs from us is the the word go and the location in which to drop it off and one of his guys will come and tow it up with a, um, a van, I think. Um, so we'll look to get that into some of uh, the ground, like the lower ground I think we'll go into, um, but we'll see. Gotta be, it's a little bit bigger than this, it's five foot longer, so we can't pick fields that are going to be too tight to get in and out of. Um, I want to kind of assess how it is without having to worry about any extra headaches really, so we'll need to think about that, and I'm sure we will at some point, but uh, right now we'll just carry on with what we have. As you can see, it is a lovely sunny day now. Um, sun's going to be setting very shortly, I would imagine, so we're going to get some glorious sunsets. Um, yes, but ideally I'd like the sun to set out for a little bit longer if possible. Obviously right now we are chopping this straw. Uh, you can bale rape straw. It's quite quite an absorbent straw as it goes. A lot of uh, dairy farm, or a lot of farmers use it with their cattle when they've run out of uh, bed and straw when they run out of kind of wheat or barley straw. It's not the preferred option but you know it, it is a good substitute and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people are looking into it now actually given the prices of straw everywhere. 
Uh, but no, we're going to just be chopping ours and then we'll be coming straight in. As soon as we get this field cleared, we'll be coming in with the discs, I think. Give this a bit of a chop over and then bring. we're going to be putting this straight into barley as well. Uh, ideally, the sooner the better. Just over the hedge here, on the other side of this field, we have got the cover crop in the ground. Uh, so we may well see if we can get going there. Um, that is going to be going to spring barley as well. Uh, or winter barley, beg your pardon. So we'll put that in and then... That's going to be direct drilled, actually. We'll spray off the cover crop and then we'll come straight in and um, see how that fares. So this is a bit of an experiment for us. So we'll be very eager to see how that works. We could actually look to use the Macdon header in the field just behind the trees there. That wouldn't be a bad option at all. And there's a nice, easy access point for the gateway on the far side as well. And if the combine's up here, that might make a bit of sense. We'll think about that one. I'll give Charlie a ring later on to see what he wants to do. So the header we've got on the go here is 30 foot. Uh, it's a nice wide header. The header we're going to be getting, the Macdon header, was going to be 35, so it's going to be a little bit wider. It's really going to test the limitations of the uh, the, the combine, actually. Um, be very interested to see if the combine can actually handle it at all. So we'll have to await the results of that somewhat eagerly. Uh, if we do get that header, it sh if the combine can handle it, it will mean as well that we should be able to survive without upgrading our combine for the next year or two, because the header will be able to increase our output be good. Save us a little bit of a, well, a lot of cost actually, because I was looking at some prices for a new John Deere uh, for the S690i's and good heavens are they expensive. They are a big beast of a combine, let me tell you that. So as we continue here, I must remember to say thank you very much and welcome to all of the new subscribers again. Lovely to have you on board. Uh, as always, I do this pretty much every episode. Let me know down below where you're watching from. Uh, I do like to see the messages come in saying uh, where you're watching from. We've got a lot of people in Ireland. We've got a lot of uh, a lot of people across the UK. Uh, a couple of folks from across the United States as well. So it's always very interesting to see where you're all from. So do please let me know. It's always do like to kind of get in touch and I will endeavor to comment to uh, to respond to any comments as well any questions you have I'm always happy to answer where possible but for now I think we're just going to keep on plugging away uh, we should be able to get going for like I say another good couple of hours at least here so we'll see what we can do and then uh, we will no doubt come back to you over the coming days with more uh, more little blogs more updates as we progress hopefully weather permitting at least progress through some of our spring crops here and uh, we should be the position where we can get them all done sooner rather than later if we get some good weather like this fingers crossed we should be good but you'll find out how we go I'm more than sure of that so until next time thank you very much for watching as always it has been my absolute pleasure I uh, hope you have enjoyed it uh, if you have don't forget to hit that like button and if you're new to the channel firstly welcome secondly don't forget to comment let me know where you're from and thirdly don't forget to subscribe um, but until next time, thank you very much for watching, do stay safe, enjoy what you're doing, but most importantly, as ever, happy farming.